Now let's uh, look at a numerical involving a two-period binomial tree. Consider a two-period binomial model for a non-dividend stock whose current stock price is 100. So I am taking up as a two-period kind of a model. So basically it comes out uh, which is more or less something like this. So this is the kind of a tree that gets generated. This is uh, the period 1. This is a period 2. Fair enough. Assume that over each of the 6 month period. So each period is 6 months. So probably this is a 1 year. The stock price can either move up by a factor U 1.2 or down by a factor D 0.8. So let me take these numbers into a spreadsheet. So taking it the current stock price being 100 and additional details wise we have got them as the each time period that I am considering is a 6 monthly period. So I am taking uh, the period as 0.5 years. And we have got the up factor as 1.2, the down factor as 0.8. So which means at the end of the first period, the price of this stock is going to be uh, 1.2 times. So it's going to be 120. And probably the price after the two periods is again going to be 144. And what about on the downside from 100, it can come by a factor of 0.8. So which is working out to 80 and it can even come down by a factor uh, of another 20% down to 64. And here also there is one possibility which I can take either from here coming down by 10% where it is working at 96. So this is the kind of a binomial tree that is uh, getting operated for the stock prices using this information. Continuously compounded risk free rate is 5% for the 6 monthly period. So R, all I am taking is the 5% continuously compounded rate. I am taking it as R equal to 5% for the 6 monthly period. Now, first of all, prove that there is no arbitrage in the market. How do I say, when do I say there is no arbitrage? If the down and the up, or probably if uh, the, the risk-free rate e power rt, if the risk-free rate e power r lies between d and u, if the e power r is lying between d and u, that is what I am considering as there is no arbitrage in the market. So, if I am considering e power r for that uh, 6 monthly period uh, itself, I am getting it e power 5% 1.05. So, this 1.05 is lying between 0.8 and 1.2. So, there is no arbitrage in the market which is very much known. And construct the binomial tree. This is the binomial tree for me which we have already constructed here. Okay. Calculate the price of the standard European call option written on the stock with the strike price K equal to 100. So, the strike price we are taking it as 100 with a maturity of 1 year. So, the option is uh, expiring somewhere on these, in this period. This is the one year period. So, for me, the next important thing is assess what are the payoffs at each of the period. So, all I am looking at in terms of the payoffs is if the stock price, if the stock price is greater than the strike price in case of call option, the payoff is going to be the difference between the two. So, 144 minus 100 is going to be the payoff. Otherwise, it's going to be zero. 
So here I am saying my payoff is going to be 44. If the stock price has gone to 96, the payoff is going to be 0 because uh, uh, I'll, the, the, the long will not exercise the option. And even if the, pay, if the stock price is going to 64 also, the exercise is not going to happen. So the payoff is coming to is going to come out to be the same itself. Now, all I am saying is now from this information, I am trying to find out, uh, first of all, the expected payoffs at each of the state. So here the expected payoff, if I have to know the expected payoff under the two-period binomial tree model, I need to know the probability of up moment as well as the probability of down moment. So the probability of up moment, I'll try to find out uh, using the formula which we have uh, discussed earlier. The probability of up moment is e power r minus d divided by u minus d. So using that logic, I'll take e power r, right, probably I'll take it as e power r minus d. I'm dividing it by u minus d. So this is telling me that there is a, a 62.8% chance of the price going up and probably a 1 minus of that which is around 37.18% chance that the price is going down. Using this I can find out the expected payoff at this particular stage. There is a 62.8% chance that I can make a payoff of 44, make a, make a payoff of 44 and there is a 37% chance that the payoff is going to be 0. So based on this, the expected payoff is coming out to 27.63 here and the same logic executed here is giving me a payoff of 0 because there is a 62% chance that the 0 is the payoff and even 37% chance that 0 is the payoff. So the average, the expected payoff here is going to be 27.63. Now if I take the present value of the same by taking it for 6 months, I'll take it as e power or, or we have already computed e power r. So I'll divide it by this much which will give me the present value at this particular stage after 6 months. Similarly, uh, here also, I'll get this number divided by the e per r to get the present value here. Now, the same logic I can execute. I can very well uh, try finding out, uh, I can very well uh, try finding out uh, the expected value here because this can come only if the stock price is uh, going up, which has a 62.8% chance. So, I'll directly take it as 62.8% chance of getting this much plus 37% chance of getting a 0. So the expected value is coming out to be 16.51 here. I'll take the present value of this by taking uh, this by e per r. e per r is already there with us. So this is giving me a call option premium of 15.71. So this is the way I can find out the price of the European uh, call option on this particular stock which is working out to 15.71 quite comfortably here. Alright, now let me look at the next part. Consider a special type of a call option with a strike price k equal to 100. Maturity 1 year. Up to here it's same as the earlier one. The underlying asset for this special option is the average price of the stock over one year. The underlying asset for this uh, special uh, stock is the average price of the stock over one year. So now what could very well happen is here if I want to know the average price of the stock. So now they are creating different scenarios. One is the average price of the stock which is coming over. So when it has gone up and up and up, the average price of the stock is the average of these three numbers, which is 121.33 because it's saying average price of the stock over one year calculated as 
average of the prices at time 0, 0.5 and 1. So that's one scenario. The second scenario is the average where I'm talking of uh, the first one being an up movement, then being a down movement. So this is one more possibility. Then similarly, I can uh, look at the average of this, the down movement and then the up movement. And again, the average coming out as this, the up down movement and the down movement. So these are the four different average prices that are available. And again, what is the probability that the price is going to be this much? We have already got the probabilities of up movement. So the probability of this is up and up. So I am multiplying this by this. Here the first one is an up and the second one is a down. So the probability is going to be 0.23. Here also the first there is a down and then an up. The probabilities is going to be something like this. And finally uh, it is a down and a down. So now when I am going ahead with the option. Okay, what is the payoff associated here? The payoff that is uh, associated at this particular point is the value minus the strike price. Okay, the payoff associated here is going to be uh, either 0. So, I can take it as if, if this value is, if the stock price, which is if the asset price is greater than the strike price, this would be the payoff. Otherwise, the payoff is going to be 0. So, in this case, the payoff has operated to 21.33, whereas in the other two cases, the payoff is coming out to 0. Now I could very well find out the present values of each one of them. Right. Uh, uh, the, the present. So I can uh, very well uh, find out the expected value at each case. So here the expected value of the payoff if I want to find out. So expected value of payoff after one year at time 1. I could easily get it as this number multiplied by this plus this number multiplied by this plus this number multiplied by this plus this number multiplied by this, by this which is giving me around 9.66. I find out the present value as of the time period by discounting it by almost by one year. So this divided by e power r into t which is two periods which is coming out to 8.744. So if, if this is the kind of a quality, if this is the kind of uh, option, its value is going to be only 8.744. Whereas in the earlier case for the same strike price, same maturity, we got that the value of the option is uh, around 15.71. Though it's uh, slightly uh, out of context, this kind of options are typically uh, called as Asian options. Right, wherein on the maturity, we are looking at the price of the option, the price that is being used for the payoffs is the average price over a particular period. Instead of looking at the price only on the maturity date, we are looking at the prices over the entire path of the option. They are called as Asian option, but of course we don't need to really know the namings and all here. But we just need to know that uh, in case of this kind of a behavior, we see that the price of the option is going to be much lesser compared to what I have seen in the earlier case where only the maturity uh, price is typically being considered. So this is how we can use the two period binomial uh, tree model to evaluate uh, the price of the call option. Similar kind of a process can be followed for evaluating the price of the put option as well. All right.